Hello and welcome to another episode of Interviews from Undisclosed Locations. I'm still your host, Mark Papiani. Undisclosed Locations is a series of podcasts produced by the John Cotton Dana Library at Rutgers University. In this series, I'll be talking with my colleagues and co-workers to discuss their positions and jobs at the Dana Library. I also try to get a little bit into their personal lives. Drinks that happen may depend on the time of day and whether or not someone cares to indulge. Conversations remain light but may get a bit in depth and there's always a chance for a few laughs. But again, don't hold me to that. Today's guest is Bobby Tipton, business librarian and information literacy coordinator at the John Cotton Dana Library. I don't okay, know. let's try it now. Okay, it's we're good now. Okay, well for for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> let, 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 let's talk let's talk fast yeah let's talk really fast because uh really uh webex has decided it doesn't like me and it does all kinds of things to me it it uh erases my name and turns me into user yeah and uh, on a few, uh, uh yeah <laughs> and then it just does this weird thing with the mute and unmute and whatnot but i think i think we might be okay now i've gotten rid of my friend I I could have I could have brought my friend in, but my friend usually takes up about most of the screen. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you heard. We got we got a new dog, and um, I actually took a little trip out to Utah of all places, and uh, it was a whirlwind trip back in July. I flew out in the morning. I picked up this little 15 pound sheep a doodle <laughs> at the at the Utah Salt Lake City Airport put, stuffed them in a little uh, carrier got back on the plane got back home and at now 6 months old he's about 55 pounds oh my goodness how he's... big is he going to be when he's fully grown <laughs> well the vet expected that he would be when he was 30 pounds, I said, expect that to triple. <laughs> and I said, really? Okay. I like big dogs. I always wanted to, I always <laughs> wanted big dogs and I have big dogs. We've, we've, we've had one small dog, a mini schnauzer, who we unfortunately lost within the past year. But, um, I'm this, sorry. No, nah, that's okay. This, this guy is, I don't want to say taking her, taking her place, but he's absolutely huge. If I can get him up here later on, but uh, seriously, he's he's just very <laughs> very rambunctious, very mouthy. He's still a puppy. Uh, like I said, at six months old, he's still a puppy. And uh, but he's a he's a gorgeous sheep -a doodle, which is a, an old English sheepdog. And, old English sheep. Okay. And uh, he's standard poodle. Standard so, poodle. Yeah. Now I don't know what the what the role of standard poodles is but i can imagine that any any herding dog is a handful <laughs> <laughs> so Excuse you've me. got half of a herding dog he, there yes yes he, yeah. he, he's a handful he, he that's that's he has that characteristic about him always active always has to be doing something always, yes always, always. yes and, and maybe and herding you folks around a little bit yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Does he get uh, nervous when you're one place and the rest of the family is another place in the house? Uh, if you, you mean he he does that zooming thing around? Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Yes. And <laughs> my house is my house is not huge, but um, and you throw a huge dog in the mix. Plus, we also have a a labradoodle also. Oh my! Uh, we have a, a 50, 60 pound labradoodle, Charlotte. Oh my goodness! And, oh my uh, goodness! And she's not very keen on on the idea of this new guy, and she's still getting used to him after mm -hmm. a, few, a few months. But going back to your question about the uh, the standard mm -hmm. poodle, good thing he was a puppy when he came in there. I don't know if dogs do the same things cats do. Mm hmm. Yeah, the alpha dog, the alpha, yeah. you know that kind of thing. Uh, whack him in the head a few times. Well, Charlotte unfortunately has a a, a little behavioral problem. Um, which she doesn't like being crowded, and as soon as he like walks by, she'll like, Argh! you know, snap at him or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, but um, the the standard poodle is they're very smart, um, and they don't shed. 
So you get, right. old, you get an old English sheepdog with, with long hair on it that doesn't shed. And this is great. I mean, I could brush this dog for like an hour and there's nothing there as far as, far as like whatever hair comes off him. But um, uh, it, it, he's a handful. He's a real handful. Like I said, I'm I'll sure. Can, I'll see if I can get him up here a little bit later on. Okay, I'd love yeah. to see that boy. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but you have uh, the one cat. What was you? You. I have two. two? I have two. Yeah. And the male cat is Kelrickson, and then uh, the female cat is Patricia. Oh, I like that. And you won't see her. No. Um, well, you might. I mean, it depends on the time of day. If she decides, she just has to climb up. You know, okay. and be part of whatever I'm doing. Okay, all right. It's very so, embarrassing. These things don't happen in the office. Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> I think if, when we get back to the office, I think things are going to change, and I'm going to have to like. You know, I, I'm sorry, I have to replicate my home office back in my new office, and my home office has my dogs in it. <laughs> That's <laughs> you know, right. So, so That's right. You know, I don't think anybody would really mind a cat or or a a calm dog or anything like that well allergies and yeah. i think some people are afraid of dogs and actually there are people who are afraid of cats also uh, not yeah. many no but there are some they have a, a morbid fear of cats yeah i don't understand that i've had cats pretty well much. <clears throat> in certain in certain ethnic groups um i think they think cats either cats are bad luck or they're um uh, I, I think that's. I friend, think it's considered bad friend, luck. It friend of the could devil be the or witch's something like that. thing. Yeah, I don't the know. Witch's thing. I think that's evil eye. Thing. Evil yeah. eye. That kind yeah. of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> um, I don't know. But yeah. there are people who have morbid fears of cats. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've more people who are afraid of dogs, <laughs> or just don't just don't like them. Um, I don't know that they're afraid of them, but they just don't like them, and I I could never right. understand that because we've had dogs. Oh, throughout my life, and and cats too. Now, Kelrickson, you said was a name for a science fiction character. Yes. In yes. Which, this which... Is, <clears throat> excuse me. This is from Catherine Acero's um, Ruby Dynasty series. Okay. And Kelrickson was one of the uh, Imperial family. Oh, okay. That's all I'm going to tell you in case you decide to read the books. <laughs> and if you do decide to read the books, I don't know if you like science fiction or not. Do you? I I do, but unfortunately, I don't I don't read that much of it. Uh, I'm more of a science fiction movie movie fan. I uh, to to take my mind off uh, the 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 business of the day between yesterday and today. Uh, I just put on Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I never heard of that. that oh, one. come on! <laughs> this it sounds like, really awful. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, this is like the fifty, my fifty worst movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I know you like those. <laughs> I, I do, and I said I, I just got to take my mind off the of things. So I put, I, I recorded it this past weekend. I said, no, oh, I, I haven't seen it in a long, long time. So, and it's not in my collection yet. Um, I've been, you know, collecting all the, uh, the 50 worst movies of all, my 50 worst movies of all yes, time. Yes, yes. Well, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll have, uh, <laughs> did you ever see Island of the Wild Women? Oh, oh, uh, I'm sure I did. And it was probably oh. so bad that I think I shut it off like 20 Oh, minutes. God, the acting was so <laughs> awful. I've seen high school plays that did much better jobs yeah, of yeah. acting than that. Really terrible, terrible costumes, terrible everything. It was yeah. just, direction was wooden. It was awful. Yeah. Awful. There, <clears throat> when we used to live in, uh, now I can't remember if this was Columbus or after we moved here to New Jersey, but they used to do really dreadful movies um, in the middle of the night on Saturdays. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, Sven Gulli, you know, hosted something or remember Elvira, Mistress of the Dark and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah those she, kinds of awful, yes, yeah. that's right. Ch Chiller yeah. movie theater. Ooh, what the Chiller. Yeah. <laughs> and that big hand. Big hand it. Yeah. it had six <laughs> fingers on it. Right. Sure. Yep. Uh -huh. Exactly, that, and some of those were real losers. Yeah. I know and they were they were so bad they were good. Yeah, uh, and, and this is before mystery. The what was the mystery theater two thousand or whatever? Mystery science theater. 
mystery yeah, science, science theater. mystery science theater. Yeah, with those three guys, they sit in the mid, the, the front row and stuff, and all they do is just and this comment on the film. I was like, "Shut up! I just want to watch the movie." <laughs> I know. I know. I, 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 know how, I know how bad the film is. Let me find. Let me, you know, make my own comments. Oh, but God. anyway. And, Those were um, the days we actually used to have time to sit and watch movies. If you believe that. Well, that's that. it. Yeah, sit and sit and time, yeah. <laughs> time to watch movies. Well, uh, my 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 time to watch movies now is when every everyone goes to bed, because nobody wants to sit and watch a bad movie with me because they just comment and say, "How can you watch this?" So I wait till I wait, I, I wait till everyone goes to bed, and I'm up at one one o'clock in the morning watching bad movies. So, <clears throat> and um. Did I lose you? You're still there. I'm oh, still here. Oh. I got one of those messages that said that I had background noise. It was my awful laugh, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I appreciate your laughs. I really do. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I try to throw a little humor in every once in a while, and then when I get nothing but dead silence, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but if, if something like something like your laugh, I can appreciate. And please, bring it on. <laughs> Okay, even if it upsets my microphone. <laughs> no, nah, that's okay. That's quite all right. That's quite all right. We've been locked down for six months. Uh -huh. Did you ever expect that you would see something like this in your lifetime? Never in my lifetime. I never expected to be chained to my house like mm -hmm. this, uh, except by extreme illness on or, or something. You know, yeah. that that was the only time I could think of uh, ever being, I, you know, I've worked my whole adult life. I've worked. Right. Or gone to school or both. <laughs> True. And, uh, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> I don't like staying home. No. It does nothing for me. Right. I'd rather be at work, hanging out with people and doing my job mm -hmm. and um, seeing the students face to face. Mm hmm. Which is Zoom is okay, but it's not the same. No, no. Um, and it, all our communications now have have to be very formalized, and it's very difficult because I I like the, the reason I like the job I have is is there's a lot of informal communication with people, and you can you can help them out, and uh, the the phrase make make a difference comes to mind but i don't mm -hmm. know do we ever make a difference but but we do try to help people out and um you do that by knowing people and now it's not possible to know people in the same way you can know people but mm -hmm. just not the same way I and i think a lot of younger people <clears throat> are really used to this and consider knowing someone or liking someone on a social media platform is knowing or liking them. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, being from the before time, <laughs> <laughs> the ancient days, oh, ah, uh, <clears throat> it's not the same thing. It's just not the same thing. I mean, the closest I get is the, the most immediate uh, is texting. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I text because that's been a lot of my personal communication these days. Uh, just straightforward uh, texting, no FaceTime or anything like that? Yeah, just texting with all kinds of people. Um, I just texted with a student to get an appointment put together. Oh, that's true. So because that you, you do uh, online video chat, uh, online. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is going to be a Zoom uh, consultation. And it was more direct to mm -hmm. text her than to send her an email. Yeah. In fact, she said in her email, you can text me, and I know what her life is like right now. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> right. And I got an instant, instant communication, and we mm -hmm. got the time set, and we're going to do it this afternoon. So. Yeah. Um, I, I know that um, <laughs> students and younger people, they're much more adaptable to this type of communication mm -hmm. and, and texting and so forth. And mm -hmm. I just... Me personally, I, I really feel the need to talk with people, even if it's just, you know, this kind of two-dimensional talking that we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I need to see people's reaction. I need to hear the inflection in their voice. I need to, you know, read their body language. Um, 
so much uh, uh, miscommunication I've, I've been having uh, with just straightforward texting. I mean, I can't text one sentence at a time, one phrase at a time. And God forbid you type in the wrong word and then spell check, you know, says, I'm going to substitute this word in for you instead because I think that's what you're talking about. And then you, yes. end it, you know, and you, you, yes. you, you get the totally wrong, <clears throat> wrong message coming across. So I've, I find that I, I've had to go into a, a notes page or something like that and type out everything that I want to say first. Or actually, mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes I use the speaking um, option. <clears throat> That's what I use. Yeah, and speak mm -hmm. right into it and then go back in and proofread it and, yep. and, and grammarly check it and then send it. But um, I don't know. Uh, I'm so glad I don't have any younger children who are um, – having to deal with online, you know, schooling, learning, education. Um, my daughters are, are right now in college. Mm -hmm. So they're adapting rather well, I think. But um, it's not fair and it's not the same. And I don't know when it's going to change, when it's going to get back. I don't, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know if it will ever go back exactly the way it was. I think that now we are we are getting a little more adept. I don't. I won't say we're adept, but I will mm -hmm. say we're a little more adept um, at using these medium media right um, to convey information and to. Uh, I, I think the hardest thing is still to have a, a class discussion. So <clears throat> when I'm in a class and it's a small class and people can talk, mm -hmm. it works much much better. But I have given classes to like 60 nursing students at a time or Jonathan and I, uh, Jonathan Torres, my mm -hmm. colleague in business, we, we did a business forum class that had 220 students in it. Online. And so online. Oh. Yes. So obviously that is a one-way communication. They do have the chat as a back channel so and the professor was watching the chat and the professor talked to us mm -hmm. during the time so the useful thing there was because Jonathan and I did it together instead of listening to one voice droning on and on we had two voices we we divided it up Okay. We spoke to each other, and we spoke to the professor, and he spoke to us. So instead of one person droning, it was three people having a conversation about this information. And that, it was not ideal, mm -hmm. but I think it was better than doing it alone for a big group like that, because that's yeah. just terrible. Yeah. I don't you know? see how it's happening. I, mm -mm. I, I know I could never do it. I don't think I could do it, really. I think you could. Mark, you're a really good communicator. I think you'd be a wonderful communicator. You know what's hard, though? Um, I was in a position the other day where they, they requested, I really didn't want to do this, but they requested that I show a video mm -hmm. during, uh, it was Zoom, and <clears throat> it just got messed up completely. I warned them ahead of time. I said, look, Zoom can mess with videos. Yeah. Sometimes it gets delayed or something like that. In this case, it was, it was um, the audio. I couldn't get it loud enough oh, for them yeah. to hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm not sure why that is, but it makes it very difficult because when you're when you're working live, you can talk for a little, then you can play a short video, and they can talk a little more, and they can students can do mm -hmm. something, and then they can talk to you, and it's all broken up. <clears throat> but in uh, online, it has to be much more choreographed. And I will know next time I will never, yeah. never show a video again. I didn't want to this time, but they insisted. And um, But uh, we do the lip guides. You know, we have library guides. Right, right. And you put videos in there for asynchronous. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, But showing them synchronously, I would not do that again if I could possibly avoid it because I thought it was terrible. Yeah, some way you can get the, the video to uh, the participants ahead of time or, you know, mm -hmm. offline. That's al always so much better. Always so much better. Right. You know, right. You could, and we try to do that as much as possible because of technical problems. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in Zooms where um, in the middle of Zoom, uh, a Zoom meeting, 
um, workshop, uh, we had a big storm here. Oh. And the electricity went out. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That was, um, or the, I don't know what the, what the name, I, I, Iasis? Was that, 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 that storm? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I think so. I don't remember <laughs> the name exactly, but yes. Yeah. So um, we had fortunately just gotten to the end toward the end of the workshop and my partner in crime was still functional and she could finish the workshop. Okay. And then another time Jonathan and I were doing a, a class. <clears throat> we got down to the last 10 minutes of the class mm -hmm. and my computer just decided to freeze. <laughs> just, yeah, it's like that. Oop, nothing. <laughs> yes. Fortunately, Jonathan like, was still active, and he could finish the class. <laughs> but, I mean, by the time you get one of those things diagnosed, and then you get your computer back up, and you get yeah, it acting yeah, right, yeah, the class your whole, is over. Yeah, the class is over. You, you've lost your momentum. Yeah. You know, it, it's, all, right, it's you know, all over. All right, where was I? All right, class is missed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I really like asynchronous. I really like having a short video or two. Sometimes we get the videos from YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, from other places, or sometimes we make our own. Mm -hmm. uh, try desperately not to make them too long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, that I'm, was... I, I'm notoriously looking at the length of a video before I actually, you know, dedicate myself to it and say, "Yes, okay, all right, four minutes I can deal with. Twenty-three yes. minutes I can't." Okay, <laughs> I know. You know, all our students do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They all look at the length of the video before they look at the video. Yeah, yeah. And I've learned from, uh, I just got done with a conference, a national conference that was all online. Oh, okay. Very bizarre. Very bizarre experience because why do you go to a conference? You go to a conference, you stay in a hotel room, you have dinner with people that you've never met before, you mm -hmm. talk to people before sessions, after sessions, in the exhibit halls and all this kind of thing. Well, they tried to... They tried to have a conference that was built like that online. And in part, it worked, and in part, it didn't work. But the good thing about the conference is, because of the nature of this, having it online, they kept the sessions. Once you paid, and they're going to have the sessions through, I think it's November 13th. So I've been going back now and picking the things I didn't see before mm -hmm. that I wanted to see, but I didn't have time to watch them. And... um. I'm as bad as anybody. I'll start one and I'll give it five <laughs> minutes. And man, if they don't hit it in five minutes, I'm going on to the next session because I, I paid money for this. I don't want to sit there, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. I'm very grateful <laughs> for that. That bar along the bottom is like, I skipped this part. All right. Skip this part. All right. Skip this part. You know, they, they, there are certain things, whether they're on YouTube or wherever, where they're doing so much explanation and so much nothing as far as demonstration goes mm -hmm. uh, that I say, okay, this is what you're going to show me over here. This is what, you, what you're setting out to do. I'm going to skip to the last 15 seconds of it and show me how it's done. You know, that's, yeah. you know, oh, I, I, I can't. My time is valuable. <laughs> it is. Well, all our time is valuable. And right. our time online is valuable because we don't want to sit here in front of this screen for 24 hours a day. It's just not physically possible. No, it's not. And uh, <clears throat> I re I didn't realize how much actual physical activity I was getting just by going to work. You know, parking, uh -huh. parking my car uh, two blocks away. Walking to work, forgetting my keys, having to walk back to my car, <laughs> uh -huh, and, then, uh -huh. and then you know j just the fact that we live, uh, we work in a building with with four floors, up and down the steps, elevators. It's a it's a big building. I mean, and I, not that I'm sitting around actually, you know, you know, blowing up and 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 not getting any exercise whatsoever. But I need to I I need to move a little bit more than I have been. Yes, um, you know. And um, so uh, I try to take my dogs out for a walk or go for a bike ride or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I want to go back to work. I want to. Have you have you been back to the office at all? No, Not I haven't all. been back in the building at all. Oh, okay. I had some stuff to return, and I was going to drive in. Yeah. And my husband said this is ridiculous, and he sent it out UPS. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't have to go back. 
Well, um, so you, you have a you have a little bit of a drive, from what I understand. Quite a bit, yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I I don't, um, and it's a fifteen minute ride for me. Actually, um, I have been in the office, I'd say about a half a dozen times within the past six months, but it's only just for special projects and so forth. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the whole campus is eerily shut down. I mean, it's. uh, there's nobody walking around i'm Uh, sorry you're breaking up oh you're freezing i'm freezing i probably got like three different devices yeah i think you're gonna be back soon but um how about now no no yeah try it now without the video and see yeah see if the audio comes through so how about now better that's good yeah i think sometimes uh the video takes all my bandwidth that makes me freeze right and uh which is fine because you know i didn't even i didn't even say what we were doing here you know this is a podcast we're doing for undisclosed locations and so forth and uh, (laughs) and i usually introduce you know uh, the person i'm i'm uh uh, going to be talking with, and uh, I didn't. We didn't even do that. We just dove right into it. But that's that's quite all right. We haven't we just seen jumped each, in. We haven't seen each other for a while, and so you know, it's it was, true. It's good good to see you. So, anyway, uh, good to see you. But um, we'll talk all about the the podcast and so forth later, uh, which is strictly audio. So don't worry about the video or anything like that. Okay, good. I'm yeah. glad. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I have a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> that's lit. I've heard that too. Did you ever do any radio? <laughs> did you do any radio in college? No, my husband did. He has a wonderful speaking voice. Yeah. He he did it, but I didn't. But mm. uh, if I ever went into the entertainment industry, what I would want to do is voiceovers yes. and interp. Yeah. Mhm. That's what I would like to do the most. In fact, yeah. I thought about it. Well, they, they say um, there, there there is a market out there for that. And I've always thought mm-hmm. that, that, too, as far as voiceovers. I mean, being a father of three children and, and reading books and stuff to them all the time when they were growing up, I would mm-hmm. always try to you know, take on a role of the character, or the voice of the character and so forth. And the kids loved it. And I found it very easy to do something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did, I did radio in college. I went to Rutgers, so we had WYU, mm-hmm. the radio station there, and that's actually where I met my wife. So she she, she did radio also. She's got a great radio voice. One of those you remember, Allison Steele, the Nightbird from WNEW. Oh Rutgers. yes, Allison Steele, the Nightbird. Oh yeah, yes, well, I remember. That, well, that's what Anne's, <laughs> that's what Anne's voice was like. <laughs> oh wow! So yeah. That's what that's what got. No, Ken me. Ken's voice is fantastic. Mm-hmm. On a on a. Uh, any kind of uh, microphone or anything. Yeah. Very, very good. He's a, he's a now, big audio file, um, right? He's a yes. Big, yeah. So he knows all that stuff too. He knows. Yeah. What, he's what, into sound. Yeah. He's into sound. Yeah. Mm hmm. Now, I cut you off there. You were going, uh, heading into. Your... No. Uh, I was just going to say that making short videos, educational videos, gives me an opportunity. And mm-hmm. in fact, um, I always do it without a picture. Now, people say that if you do it with a picture, I tried a couple with a picture, and I thought the picture was distracting. But people say it's more humanizing if you do have a picture. Mm -hmm. Um, But I really enjoy doing the online or the voiceover for something, a demo that's happening online. And I do the explanation as we do the demo. And if that's boring for people, then it's boring for people. But I do make an attempt uh, to edit afterward. And I know you and I have talked about editing many times. Compared to you, I'm a very primitive (laughs) editor for video and audio. But um, I use a free program called Shotcut. Mm -hmm. And it does have a timeline. It's not fancy, but it does have a timeline. And you can get... You can't get really, really precise with your edits, but you can get pretty close yeah. to a precise edit with it. And um, <clears throat> you can put your um, intro and end cards on, and then you can do um, you can um, uh, fade in the video and fade in your audio. Yep. Which sometimes I forget to do, but 
you can do a package that's really not too terrible. I mean, it's, yeah. it's obviously it's amateur, but it's not, it's not terrible once you're done editing it. But I really think an awful lot of good video happens in the editing room. And I know you're an expert at that. You, you do some fantastic video stuff. Um, I envy that. Uh, I don't know if I'd have the, the patience. <laughs> that, that's what it basically is. It, it, it really is the patience for something like that. Um, they say for every uh, 10 minutes of, of video that you shoot, you're in the editing room for at least three to four times that long. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't doubt it. Yeah. And uh, to be able to just sit and stare at a screen you know, just moving little bits of, of, of video around. Uh, you know, I find it satisfying. You know, other people find it very, very tedious, but I, I, I you know, very picky about my uh, my video editing. And mm -hmm. I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Oh, well, you're a master. And I really, um, it's hard for me because of my hand, you know, my, I have wrist problems. So, um, as you know, with, with uh, editing video, you go over and over the same segment many mm -hmm. many times yeah yeah and um so that's a little on the difficult side but um i really enjoy the process and i'm um, uh, i hope i'm getting better at it um, well we have lots of time uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> oh, oh, no. okay we don't have lots of time okay we sometimes we have time slots but you know the, the we're getting to the point of the semester now where students have papers mm -hmm. and um they want to talk to somebody oh so i yeah. don't have a whole heck of a lot of time but yeah um okay. we can we can edit from time to time um, that, bring, that brings me to um uh this little segment portion i mean when people do need to get in touch with you specifically mm -hmm. uh how would they do that i mean Email is the only way they have now. Right. Um, if uh, if they call my office phone and leave a message, the message comes back to me as an email. Oh. So, That's yeah. Hard. I got that arranged with OIT okay. early in the process because there was no way to transfer things from my telephone to, to my home. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did that. So that's great. If it's somebody that I deal with a lot, I don't like to give out my cell phone number, but yeah. sometimes I will do that. Um, but email would be uh, what? R, R. Tipton? It's just Tipton. T-I-P-T-O-N at Rutgers.edu. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm always glad to hear from students and um, always glad to work on their, their issues. Sometimes I work on, on them, just I work on the thing and report back by email. But sometimes it's a question of actually sitting with someone, quote unquote, via Zoom. And uh, sometimes if we can't get together, this is, I will make a video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just make a real quick video. I won't edit, or if I do edit, it's very, very little editing mm -hmm. and I will just send it to the person because the alternative is in the old days I used to do emails and I would capture screens and place them in the email capture screens and place them in the email and you know that's a very lengthy process and it wastes a lot of time and it's actually easier for me to just start the video going and say okay this is the first place I'm looking Let's try this term and see how it goes. Okay. And then I continue with that and send it to them. Because if I can't sit with them on Zoom because we can't get together, mm -hmm. um, the next best thing is to do the video and send it to them. And I send all my videos up to YouTube and turn them into non, they're not public videos, but I turn them into YouTube videos so people can watch them on their phones or anything mm -hmm. they need to do. Yeah, that's always um, good. <clears throat> yeah, because the alternatives are not appetizing uh, <laughs> for students. I mean, they, they, they live on their phones, and sometimes they don't have access to laptops at the moment that they need to see this. Yeah. So. So, well, 
Bobby, this has been more than informative, I think, uh, as far as uh, things working for you at home and uh, getting in touch with uh, uh, faculty and staff and students. And I really, really appreciate the time. And um, I don't know when we'll be back seeing each other live and in person again, but uh, I, I, I sincerely hope it's uh, very soon. And um, with the holidays coming up, I hope you're able to spend some time with some family. Um, uh, and um, I know I'm going to try and spend some time with mine. And um, we'll see how things work out. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to try mm -hmm. a visit. I don't know how it's going to work out, but yeah. <clears throat> we're going to try one at Thanksgiving. See how it works out. All right. And uh, it was really wonderful to see you again. And I know I know you don't like to edit these, but you're going to yeah. have to edit this one because it was so strange at the beginning. <laughs> well, uh, oh, that's not, it's, it, I, would, I wouldn't say it was strange at the beginning. It was just a little, you know, I'll start the video. I'll start the, you know, I'll <laughs> start it a little bit later. It's not much editing. Yeah. It's really not, not a problem. Uh, I can't. Oh, there's my video. Can you see me again? I can. Okay. There you are. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it right now. And say I'll just say thanks very much for uh, for joining us, joining me on undisclosed locations. <laughs> you know, we you really can't tell where you are because your your background is all blurred. I tried That's that. Right. And, That's a feature of WebEx. I know it doesn't work well for me. You know, I don't know what it I, is. It depends on the background whether it works or not. Yeah. So some backgrounds just don't blur well. Yeah. Yeah. But um. I've been pretty lucky with that. I like that better than, you know, sometimes you put a background up yep. and the background, I, I don't know, when I put a background up, it's like my hair is sticking out. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, it, it weirds my, people my, out. It looks just, like I'm on fire. <laughs> mine, just bleeds, <laughs> mine bleeds through and stuff and it looks really, really yeah. stupid. <laughs> so yeah, I, so I, I prefer the blur. Yeah. There, there's a little weirdness with the blur, but it's not as bad as trying to keep a background mm -hmm. going. Yeah, well, I just have a very distracting background with air conditioners and speakers and hats and so forth. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you anyway, at home, you know, I, I, it looks like I, you're I, in a creative space. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. You know, I found that too. I mean, if you saw what was in front of me right now, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Bobby, well, I didn't get to see your dog. I'm sorry. Well, but... here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, say goodbye right now, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can sneak him up here real quick. Okay, see so you. Okay. Hang on for a second. Hang yeah, on for a second. I'll hold on for a second. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. Okay. Thank you. And that's our show for today. Please be sure to join us on future podcasts. You can listen to previous interviews by searching "undisclosed locations" on YouTube. Check out Undisclosed Locations on the web at hashtag Undisclosed Locations or on Facebook. Or you can email me directly at papiani at rutgers.edu. Thanks for joining us and we'll speak with you again in the future from another Undisclosed Location. <laughs>